too many concurrent sessions. Yep. Oh well. Hello oh, well. again, and welcome to another episode of Loose Cannon. Uh, we are still having our issue where I can't record. So I'm going to ask people, if you know something that I don't about recording through OBS and it's saying that you have too many concurrent sessions, um, help me out. because <laughs> This is driving me up a wall trying to <laughs> diagnose this, this issue that occasionally happens in my life. Um, so... Last week, we talked about Season of the Deep. This episode will also be about Season of the Deep as the story has progressed. And specific, specifically, this week, we had a huge content drop that throws a lot of, or maybe not a lot of, that throws our previous understandings potentially out the window. And so uh, I'm on one side of the fence, and I believe, Rhino, you're on the other side of the fence in this this argument. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, let's get down to it. Let's fight. <laughs> so we're gonna have we're <laughs> I think I think the best format uh to discuss that is to kind of try to take it like a almost like um like a court case. As in my head, how court cases are run. I That's might be funny. wrong. I've never been to court, so maybe this isn't how they're done. Uh I will say my piece, you will say your piece, and then uh we'll try to counteract, you know? So we Screw each... that. I'm just going to talk all over you while you're trying to say your piece. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my my opening piece is, is very simple. Um, it, it It's it's basically just, it's obvious. Don't be stupid. And <laughs> um, but so, oh, and we're shit. also going to talk a little bit about um, uh, Ghosts of the Deep, which is a dungeon that has more implications than it seems to on on face value about the the future of what we can expect with Destiny. And so, yeah, how about we just kick it all off with our lore card for this week, brought to you by yeah. Destiny Armory Defined. <laughs> it sounds so official now. What in the heck? Yeah, I mean, they're our sponsor. I've been cashing that check for months. I gotta shout them out. Oh, okay. They're an official sponsor of this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this wasn't this week's, because this week was, uh, you know, there's not much, like, other than the haha moment for this last week's, but this was really the week before, and um, this particular lore card is... It, well, it's it's really interesting because of the lore that's attached to it, but uh, I think it gleans a little bit more as to what's going on with the weapon and the lore entry that's um, that it's alluding to, and they kind of do that. Most of the the really good lore, I will say this: the really good lore cards that we get um, will typically have like a parallel with one another. Some of these items in destiny's armory uh the flavor text the weapon and mm, the lore entry don't really go together just a few of them they're just like what that has nothing to do with one another but for the most part they do really uh run parallel with one another so like a lore cards uh the goal of a lore card is to bring a real world um explanation as to what's what the heck they're talking about in game really mm -hmm. it's basically the gist of it and mm -hmm. what do they mean and what are they alluding to and how does that cross into the world of destiny and what are they what where's the bridge right because you've got these two parallel things and how do they connect with one another and what is the intent or the possible uh interpretation that the writer is trying to get you to 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 uh, discover that's that's the whole purpose of Armory to find in a nutshell. Uh, nice. So, Centrifuge, uh, right off the bat, you can tell it's spelled different from Centrifuge. <laughs> but, not. you know, you just, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> most, I guess most people, you know, that's funny because I guess most people wouldn't. You're right. Uh, maybe yeah. me, because I see these things all the time, I'm always looking for that. But, yeah, I guess you're right. Most people would. No, you know, I was I was being a dick. Uh, I did notice it, but you're. I, I feel oh. I feel like a dick now because that's a good point. There's probably people who only like <laughs> like tertiarily knew the word centrifuge, and they're just like, oh, I must have just 
I must have just thought it was with a G. It's actually with an yeah. S. Well, it's well. What's funny? Okay, so it's funny because, like, how many times have you, you know, poked fun at yourself or somebody else because they've misspelled a word that they heard or vice versa they mispronounce a word that they read you know that yeah. kind of thing a lot of people you can tell where they get oh, their God. vocabulary from by the way they pronounce things <laughs> i used to know someone that would call melee mealy <laughs> it's a bagel a wall. i was like oh you <laughs> suck i'll take a bagel with creme cheese <laughs> um <Kajmer>. so <laughs> So right off the bat, centrifuge, uh, a lot of people pronounce the word centrifuge in a way that would make you feel like it should have an S. Yeah. And so it, it's funny. I think it's funny for that reason, because like I couldn't tell you how many times people have misspelled things because they thought, you know, that's how it's supposed to be spelled. And, you know, you, you know it's like the grammar police come in. Here you go. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, centrifuge and centrifuge. So it's a play on words. Um, obviously, the the centrifuge and fuse. Uh, a centrifuge <laughs> is a lab is laboratory equipment that uses centrifugal force to separate components of different densities. Mm -hmm. um, it's also using like this is the the thing that I didn't know, but it's also used in electrical in in energy production research, uh, such as heavy ionic fusion reactor, and that becomes um, more important later, but right off the bat, a centrifuge is a is laboratory equipment that uses centripetal force or centrifugal force, sorry, to separate components of a mixture based on their density. The sample is placed in a spinning rotor and rotates at high speeds, causing the heavier particles to settle at the bottom of the tube, and while the lighter components remain at the top. Uh, this technique is commonly used in various fields, including biology, chemistry, medicine, and for the separation of blood components. A lot of people are familiar with them because, you know, when you get blood tested, that's pretty much how they separate the, you know, plasma from the blood so they can check to see if you've got anything medically, whatever. Anyway... They can also find microorganisms and DNA fragments, uh, among other things. And then the parts of the fin centrifuge are, are are pretty, you know, like they're they're the same across the board, like in all of them for the most part, other than a few little key differences. Uh, but the neat thing is, just mainly the thing to hone in on this weapon is you've got this large spinning rotor in the middle of the gun, and a centrifuge is basically that kind of mechanical look to it. Um, but here's where it kind of crosses over. So centrifuge technology has been used in, in industrial fields as well, uh, such as the production of electricity. So the, our understanding of, of production of electricity, we think of like turbines or, you know, something spinning to create electricity, stuff like that. But in other facets or other areas of industry they use a type eight of uh, centrifuge and in a turbine generator to illustrate the way it would work here is a moving fluid or steam or combustion gases or air would push a series of blades mounted on a rotor shaft which looks just like what's on the gun uh however what's key is the centrifuge or the fence centrifuge it works a little bit differently. So the, the the generating force is spinning through the rotor or the shaft or the stator coil, if you're electrically uh, minded. And that stator coil throws out a force to the walls that translates to a spinning motion that produces um, energy. And one of the ways that they do this is uh, through a generator and it converts the mechanical kinetic energy that spins through the center of the rotor. So it's like a backwards I, uh, w w way of thinking from a conventional turbine. The generator will convert that mechanical kinetic energy through the rotor and spin it out to the blades. And then those blades will pick up or throw out what is called ionic emission. And it's interesting because they talk about ionic emissions in this lower entry. Uh, 
so what they're trying to say is like there was some revolutionary um thing they discovered on how to produce electrician electricity and this gun in the Lauren tree is talking about Titan and how Titan was able to make electricity on Titan. And the scientist that was working on this particular uh, discovery was told or guided or whatever, or, you know, forced into a position where they had to make uh, more advancement on this technology in order to create uh, weapons. They didn't technically align with that philosophy, but they knew that what their research was doing was ultimately creating weapons. And so he hid this gun, or they wanted to. They wanted this gun to just remain a secret, and we discovered it in game. Um, so that's that's the Destiny world. Back to the in real life world, the ionic emissions in real world um, is this idea of taking a ionic reactor a hydrogen tube and wrapping it with high voltage coils and then that energizes the coils which creates these ionic emissions the device originally that was made uh, was you know obviously made in clear glass tube in early experiments and it used induction to ionize the gases which created a ionized gas field sort of like a plasma or electricity or arc <laughs> the this research uh, actually led to new discoveries in cold fusion and plasma fusion. However, today there there's still no accepted theoretical model for a way to create actual cold fusion. Uh, but today's nuclear hot fusion reactors use a type of centrifuge as a way to separate steam from heavy water and a way to multiply their output of energy production. Basically. Create, they, they've used this technology to, um, as they put it in here, as a full force multiplier to the industry that creates electricity through nuclear, and it helps produce an output of electricity that's way higher than they would if they just left it without the centrifugal or centrifuge, uh, you know, help, basically, the, the, the mechanical device that helps. Uh, you know, dissipate steam and heat and whatnot. I mean, you've heard of, like, nuclear meltdowns and stuff. Well, we have nuclear reactors that are located near the ocean and the sea because they use that sea and ocean water as a way to cool down the reactor. And so <clears> this was particularly neat because we're, we're talking about season of the deep. We're talking about waters and oceans and deep. And <clears> what does this have to do with this stupid gun? And <laughs> what I guess they were trying to glean on is this... Um, Visually, looking at the gun, you see this instant thing on the side. You see this rotor, right, with these spinning blades. Mm -hmm. And then down the tube of the gun, you see a series of, uh, which would be like spline gears, and then this rotor shaft, and that cam that runs down it, which is picking up energy off of the, the main rotor. And then the overall look of the gun is very much like a prototype, but it's made out of wood that looks yeah. like it would be a boat, uh, like an old boat that has just kind of decayed like a, yeah. uh, like a boat. Right. So it so, almost uh, looks like, sorry, yeah. uh, a minute ago, if, if anyone was watching live or if they're watching the video of this, I was messing with this image and, and zooming in and I probably could have done a better way of doing that without just doing it while it was on <laughs> screen. Um, in any case, I was trying to see, is this entire thing wood? Is this like decayed cracking wood? And, and I noticed, and you can, you can see it, clearly enough you don't need to be zoomed in but zooming in help me like lock it in uh it comes from uh i forgot what you call it you said spline something i think yes the the cam that runs through the center of the shaft is like a it's got splines on it and then yeah. there's the uh rotating rotor that looks like what you'd see in a turbine okay well which, whichever one whichever which one those like the that's got like the teeth on it like it's a gear um yes all the decay stems from that and it's, yeah. it's heaviest at the back of the gun with the big ass one and then as it goes farther and farther down it gets less and less to the point that there's yeah, barely right. any at the very end of the barrel and it's almost like it becomes more and more like like how you said um like with the blood and the plasma how, how things that are dense they go to the center so it's like as it as it it like compiled it into the center of the barrel 
So it's like it's decaying the wood less and less as it's going down, and it's more t- interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a lot of a lot so of it, good design in this. Yeah, the, there's the there's the obvious electrical arc that runs through it, and the the synergy of this weapon with your guardian is really interesting because as you move and you generate <laughs> electricity, I guess, from running around and jumping, it it builds your power meter, or whatever it's called, overcharge. It oh, oh, your this overcharge. Is, yeah, I know this one. I haven't used it much, yeah. so I was like, I forgot what this does. So it builds your overcharge, and while mm-hmm. you're overcharged and shooting the gun, you don't have to reload. You just hold the trigger. Mm-hmm. And the other cool thing about it is every now and then you'll get a chain of lightning amongst the enemies you shoot. So you'll get this cool little almost like Thunderlord effect. Uh, but it goes beyond that because the damage is greater the closer you get to the end of the magazine. They just don't tell you that. And yeah. it actually picks up these chain lightnings, which synergizes with your guardian. And the other cool thing is if you get the, uh, what is it? The, um, the, dang it, too many, too many things. Uh, if you get the the thing that makes the gun better, what is it called? (laughs) The catalyst. The catalyst. Jesus Christ. Okay. So the catalyst, if you're, (laughs) if you're amplified, it will, it will do, the gun will do it automatically without you having to run around. That's awesome. Um, God, I, I was going to say, I I didn't want to interrupt you while you were saying it, but you brought up Thunderlord, you brought up Thunderlord and how it has its effect. And I was just every, every time Thunderlord gets brought up in conversation or, or in game, because sometimes it's a a decently meta weapon. It just makes me think like, yeah, when are they going to bring back Abaddon and Nova Scotia? Like I miss those two. They were so fun. And why don't we have a stasis and a freaking, uh, what did you call it? One. St- oh my god, that'd be so awesome! Wouldn't it? It would be so cool to have more Thunderlord variants. Oh, it, I feel so stupid because I never thought of it. Yeah, I, I thought I, of it. I was always just like, give week. me, give me back, give me back my Solar and Void Thunderlords. Yeah, and uh, Abaddon, for anyone who only, no who, yeah, uh, Nova Scotia, whoever, whoever, whoever only played D two and D one, we had two. Uh, identical to Thunderlord frames. They were the exact same weapon, except for the fact that they were solar and void. And in, and if it were any other weapon, you might be like the fuck, but it was Thunderlord. So it was, it was awesome. <laughs> it was so yeah. great to have more of them. Why, why do you keep saying Nova Scotia? It was Nova Mortis. The fuck's Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's like, Oh, my bad. It's okay. It's okay. My bad, Canadians. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I've been watching um, anyway. I've been watching Trailer Park Boys. Maybe they said Nova Scotia and it okay, overwrote okay. my brain. This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, real quick, can I just read the uh, the yeah, lore please. on this one real quick? I, w- please, I please. won't go I won't go all off and on and tell you all the details. Um, there's some cool videos out there now if you have YouTube and you want to look them up about this particular lore and this and lore entry. Uh, I went to but, the store for YouTube yesterday. They didn't have any. Oh man, they were out. Yeah. Much freaking economy these days. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so, so the lore. <laughs> The lore entry uh, is is pretty cool, um, and I'm going to read it mainly for the connection to the weapon. And if you want to read more about it, there's a particular character in here that's mentioned that is uh, will probably send you down a pretty big rabbit hole. And I hope we learn more about him. But it's uh, Doctor Pell. So when you hear that name, Doctor Pell, uh, you might want to look that up and figure that out because there's some cool stuff. Uh, I don't really know what they're talking about, but I did read a lot about it, and it and it sent me to one particular area that I had always had a mystery about, and I realized and learned a few little things. So, that being said, we're going to focus on what it does, has to do with this gun. Uh, the lore entry. It says, Breakthrough or Broken? Excerpts from a pre-collapse report logged by Dr. Patoon Rowe a researcher in the engineering division of the New Pacific Arcology, Titan. Since Dr. Pell's breakthrough on methods of magnetic 
containment last year, we've successfully stabilized multiple ionic reactors. This, they have allowed us to expand our division's plasma technology work beyond research into development. Because the ecology's turbines have been gr uh, generating more energy than the facility consumes, leadership has decided over the objections of Dr. M. Korosek to focus initial trials on force multiplying technology. Ostensibly, leadership's hope is to supplement invasive and costly gene splicing technology with power suits that could greatly extend our divers' uptime. While the power suit initiative seems benign, arcology leadership's insistence on controlled ionic emissions research is clearly geared towards weapon development. Though I will, of course, give my full focus to our new directive, I pray these weapons remain prototypes, discarded and forgotten in the back room of history. So there's the lore. Uh, pretty cool. The, the cool little cool. thing is yeah, the cool little thing is basically the little story is basically telling you uh, they discovered a way to make more energy than they were using on Titan through their turbines that you see thrown about out in the, um, uh, well, I guess you can't see them now because there's only like the area that you can explore. But uh, you used to be able to see some of the turbines. We mm -hmm. even had to fix a couple, uh, but the Arcology's turbines. Oh, yeah, it was all, it was all. Uh dunked up with the hive I've, right yeah i poop <laughs> yeah uh but, but it's cool because um they saw that as an opportunity to basically say okay well we need to use this uh as a way to make weapons guys <laughs> so it's like any any particular advancement or any type of like uh oh hey cool we figured out this great thing that's helping us now nah, we need to use that in weapons uh, so, but what's cool here and what's mentioned in this lore is the power suit. So it yeah. talks about the power suit that um, Sloan <clears throat> ended up finding, and uh, and how that power suit was originally used for for divers to 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 extend their uptime. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and but what another thing that was neat that was mentioned was uh, the gene splicing that they were working on. <laughs> it just seems kind of crazy. Almost a little, uh, hmm, what are we doing here? Oh, dog bark. Hope y'all don't hear that. That's fine. It was just like one bark okay. that I heard. Um, okay. All right. So do we want to, uh, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to decide for us. Uh, let me make sure that I have all the features in their correct locations. Okay. So, um, God, what would it be about eight years ago uh about eight years ago we had uh the taken king come out and so in the taken king we had a cut scene where there was this very ominous night that was uh previewed and so that night is on screen right now uh they had five very bright glowing eyes it's a very high quality cut scene it, it was it was a big deal we were like who the fuck is this guy right and so this night was actually named um, Ektar, the Sword of Oryx. And so, <clears throat> for those who have dove into the Ghosts of the Deep uh, dungeon, you might recognize a similar name, but not a simple, similar uh, face, because Ektar is also in the dungeon as Ektar, the Shield of Savathun. And they are now a lucent hive and so to assume <laughs> to assume that they are the same ektar which i think it's obvious uh it's really interesting to see them go from the sword a, a sword of oryx to the shield of savathun well it's got to be the same one obviously cuz but yeah where like the name structure go? right like it's got to be yeah um, this wouldn't be the first time that Oryx slash Savathun took one of each other's. Um, Malak was Savathun's. Uh, what was Malak's full name? Uh, uh, Ur Malak? No, wait. What is it called? Uh, uh Malak, Pride of Oryx, was originally, um, 
I hmm. cannot find their original name. Me either. But it was something, their name had something to do with, like, poison. Yeah, yeah, it did. God, what was it? Oh, man, this is going to kill me now. I In remember, any case, uh, he- Malak was a strike boss that we fought, I think, also in Taken King era. Um, yeah, because it was the Taken version. Yeah, and so, well, I mean, there was only ever the Taken version that we fought. Um, oh, there oh, was it- the... What? No, because we killed him at first with the... Well, we went to the same spot twice, and there was the there was the Taken version. The first time we killed him was it was much simpler. He didn't do those balls that he threw at you. Man, D one was a long time ago. <laughs> what did burn a lock? I. Hmm. It really, it's really bothering me that I I can't remember. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. He is first oh, oh, met in him? the mission yes. Tender to the Throne on the Dreadnought, where he plans to threaten Guardian upon arrival to show his might. He sends forth a wave of Taken to fend off the Guardian. The Guardian succeeds, but Malak teleports to the Shrine of Oryx to secure his power. So that's a mission. He came back as a strike boss in there which he was taken. Um, yeah. And so basically, Malak is a very, uh, uh, very interesting character because they're supposed to be like uh, a super bloated thrall where they were never allowed to a- ascend to Acolyte to Night, um, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it's been so fucking long. Um <laughs> In any case, uh, Malak, uh, this is this is from their Grimoire card, because they used to have Grimoire cards. Malak, listen, I took you from your mother, my sister. Your shape is new. The shape is poison. The shape of secrets, I name you Malak, which means my poison. A prize to taunt Sister Savathun. Steal now for me. Oryx the Taken King. And so, um, it's... Basically, this, this whole diversion was just to say, it's not uncommon for one of the big three in in the hive to take from each other like they they kind of do that and it, it seems like they kind of do that a lot in any case ektar who has been on the screen now for far too long <laughs> has become a um has become a lucent hive and we've dealt with them once again and i believe that means once and for all uh and so Ektar is the first encounter and then or the first like boss encounter and then the the next encounter uh nope that was Ektar again the next encounter i couldn't get a good shot in the in the in the uh the dungeon <clears throat> yeah cuz i haven't done it uh recently and so this this map, very good map, made by It's a great map, yeah. Uh Priani, and I really hope that you got that name because if I if I can tell that is a uh, a Discord username and if you did not get Priani as a unique name, I don't know what your name is anymore, so I'm sending people to the wrong person. Uh hope it's hope you got it. Uh so in in this in this encounter we fight uh Samua Ur Nakru. And so Nakru, Ur Nakru kind of sounds like Nakris, and it makes me wonder if they were trying to like could could Nakris's um blasphemy of of hive resurrection like instilled like okay now resurrection is like you know, if you want to be a resurrector, you kind of have to be like Nakris. So they 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 took the name Nakru to be like, yeah, I'm following in Nakris's footsteps, type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but so, in any case, the whole the whole the whole story of this dungeon is down in the depths of Titan. Oryx's body has fallen all the way from the Dreadnought past uh, Saturn 
into Titan. It's there at the ocean's floor. And this Samua, uh, Samuma, 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 this yeah, wizard, Samuma. <laughs> this wizard is trying to resurrect Oryx specifically because Zivu Arath is obsessed with resurrecting Oryx. And, uh, so the, the at the beginning I said that this dungeon kind of has more than just on the surface. And so like on the surface, you're like, oh, okay. So Zivu Arath has like, uh, big little sister energy as as uh members from my clan have called it <laughs> where she's just wholly obsessed with my big brother oryx and you know shit like that yeah um yeah. which is might to some people it might make it might like kind of belittle her a little bit but to others it's actually even more terrifying because it's like oh not only is she a god of war she's insane <laughs> it's yeah so it's, it's it's worse I I've said it before, but I will say it again. I absolutely love Zebu Arath's voice and character mm -hmm. in game portrayal. It is like the most screaming heavy metal character you've ever heard in this game so far. Like, yeah. I, I know Oryx and I know Sabathun's voice, but they pale in comparison with the passion and anger that mm -hmm. Zebu Arath portrays. It's so good. It's just violent. The words even coming out of her mouth are like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a freaking crocodile just chewing you up. It's yeah. so good. And it, it is really good. Props to the, the voice actress. Um, let me see if I can find it really quick. Yeah. I was I was taken aback. I didn't expect to hear Zebu Arath. And when we first started playing and we were out on the titan area and we got to hear her verse, voice the first time i was like holy shit she's talking this is awesome yeah uh voiced by kimberly brooks so so like, good kudos to you very good job i completely agree it's a, a great great job voice acting um yeah but so <clears throat> this dungeon imagine a world where you only played destiny 2 Right, you you came in at the Red War, or maybe you even came in at Forsaken, or maybe you even came in at Lightfall, and you have this dungeon, and you're like, "The fuck is yeah, this guy? What the hell?" <laughs> yeah, you'd be so confused. However, you wouldn't. You wouldn't say that because if you came in, even if you came in at Lightfall, you would have the opportunity to have gone into the King's Fall raid where oh, you would have true, fought yeah. Oryx and you would have been like, oh my God, look at this guy. I killed him and look at him falling down past Saturn and yeah. Titan is a moon of Saturn. And then we find him in the waters. So yeah. even though, even though the legacy raids returning are not of like a canon event, they are a legacy raid. We are not once again going and fighting Oryx. Oryx hasn't risen right. again. It's it's more like a meditation where we're just remembering the fight. Yeah, re redoing it. But so even though that is absolutely true, Bungie has decided that because the the fight of Oryx has happened again, has been revisited, they can use Oryx in this dungeon. They can use Oryx as a story beat because we've been given that refresher. So next season. In in uh, I think it's like fifty six days, like two months from now, not even. We are going to get another reprised raid, and there's a lot of rumors that it's not going to be Wrath of the Machine, which I wouldn't be too thrilled about. But no matter what it is, it you have to keep in mind now. Whoever they bring back for us to fight, they might have something more to do in the story after that raid. Like even as a dead, even as a uh, as a dead body. You know, they might, if, if we, so let's say we bring back Axis that opens the door. If, if we fight Axis again, we have Siva again, that opens the door to then have everything with Siva again. You know, you, the, you, you can go wherever you want with Siva now that we've had this Siva refresher. And yeah, if it I would, was, I, I would love a, a Siva raid. I, I, I still feel like the, we might end up with some kind of Crota dungeon now or something. And so that's, worthy. as much as I don't want to talk about leaks, I feel like since it's a reprised raid, it doesn't really count. I have seen rumors that it's it might be Crota 
Crota's End returning, which everyone was yeah. like, why would you ever do King's Fall and then do Crota's End? And the, the answer is right there because they had this dungeon in mind and they're like, all right, let's do King's Fall first, you know? Instead of going Vault yeah. of Glass, Crota Zen, King's Fall, Wrath of the Machine, they went Vault of Glass, King's Fall, because they wanted to have Ghost of the Deep as a dungeon. And now if they do Crota's End, it's like, okay, well, are they just going to show us Crota's body again? It's like, no, probably not. But Crota sat upon atop the Oversoul throne, and we haven't yeah. seen anything done with the Oversoul or the Sea of Screams or any of that. None of that has really been touched again since. And so... So if I if I got so real quick, just mm -hmm. sidebar, if I was able to design it and I was able to do something with that and do the Crota experience again, I would make it a wizard and I would make it possessed by Toland. Oh, you mean like after after we redo Crota's end, like where it yeah, is next? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and exactly. Toland, uh when was the last time we, we had to do with Toland? That was like he was all over Witch Queen, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, not too so, long ago, we got something with Tolan. Uh, not too long ago, maybe a year ago, we got a yeah. uh, something in game that had him. Yeah, I'm trying to remember because I, I I can't really remember myself. Yeah, but he's, exactly, he's floating around still. Yeah, <laughs> and Tolan's whole thing was entirely wrapped up with Crota. So if they were to bring back <laughs> Crota and they were to retell the story of Eris's fire team and reintroduce Tolan and like really double down on Tolan, you can have exactly that that scenario where where Tolan finds a new body and does whatever yeah. the hell he decides to do because as he stands yeah. right now people are just like what is he he's just a floating ball i know nothing more about him i don't care about him and it's just like okay but maybe right. you would after you had his story retold to you or, through armor lore exactly or if he had discovered some back channel like you were mentioning of mm -hmm. being able to take control of the hive maybe not all of them but like a, a particular yeah. army of hive and it throws me back to the concept art in D1 where we had the iconic there you go, there it is the light bulb, the iconic image that never got used of the sp special looking crazy angry wizard and that's where my mind went with that, is to think what if that was Tolan in a high form um uh, Mother, Mother Codfish just said Tolan's also been appearing in the deep dives, which that's that what it. I was thinking yeah. of. Um, that was it. So I just had an interesting idea. I have yet to find Tolan in a deep dive. I people just because I only do it with with public uh, public matchmaking. People just run through that shit. I don't blame them. I get it. I can't find him. I don't know where to find him. I'm trying to find him myself. Um, but so I don't know what Tolan's deal is in deep dives. I don't know if he's giving you like hints to the future or, or what, but one thing that I just, that you just made me think of is now that the, the witness is here and everything like actually here, does, does Tolan not want to be a disciple? Oh yeah. Like, and what better way to back channel guardians as your disciples find the one that would be willing. Yeah. And so, so, so we have, we have Crota's, let's, let's, let's paint this, this scenario. We have Crota's end okay, sure. return next season throughout the armor lore. We have Eris's retelling of the events, how, who Toland was, all that stuff in more detail because in Crota's in, um, in the dark below, when we first got Crota's end, it was kind of, uh, uh, sparse in the details of yeah. what actually happened. So in the armor lore, we can get like a full retelling of exactly what happened with a key focus on Toland and his ambitions exclusively as to why Ooh. he, he like, cause it, it's, it's, it's like kind of agreed upon in the, in the community that like Toland almost tricked them into going like they came to him, but he was like, yes, yes, we will go. Yeah. We will go. You'll yeah. die, but we will go. <laughs> type of thing so we get tolans we get a tolan perspective across all the armor lore and we see it end with his ambitions to become a disciple and then the following season or maybe maybe a season in final shape we get a tolan disciple dungeon that would be so cool that'd be great and that, that's what i mean this, so this dungeon cool. has more potential than than people might have realized yeah Dude, that that would be so cool. 
I'm not oh. a latte. I'm sad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, not to um, not to not to not to brag too hard about about us, but like I would say that we have a pretty decent track record of being like good good in the ballpark predictors. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, like. <laughs> yeah yeah like, let's we're, get it. We're, we're batting a thousand on this yeah. show yeah we i don't think we've ever been wrong if you ignore all the times we've been wrong look we don't know all the answers just the right ones <laughs> <laughs> all right so um the last time we we spoke we were in week four uh week three so we've gone through week yeah. four and week, week five and i wrote some notes and so you might recall uh a number of talking points about Zivu communicating. This was during week four about Zivu communicating to more than just Sloan. Have you, do you, do you recall that? I do. So, uh, just to start it off, I, I took a note. Zivu is talking to the drifter about the past and, and specifically she's talking to him about, uh, his, his dark age experiences. And he, he has a line saying, pull, pull, pull trigger people die so you don't have to and he's like you know things were were darker back then also kind of similar and um it, it makes me wonder if uh if this is how the act of taking happens now because then in another note later on we see uh saint in the projector and he <laughs> do you remember the saint projector uh encounter from last week Oh, when he's uh, chastising Saladin? Uh, no, when he's talking to us about uh, protecting Sloane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he comes on the projector, and he spends like a solid 30 seconds being like, Can you see me? I can see you. Oh, good, yeah. we can see each other. <laughs> this is working, except when it doesn't. Yeah. And it's like, oh my god, you old, old it's man. Are you kidding me? It's our show. <laughs> That is that we should record all that because that is exactly what yeah. we do every time. Um, that would be our entry, our entry, or yeah. whatever entrance. What the fuck am I saying? Intro. It, but and so after he after he discovers how to use technology, uh, Saint communicates to us that he's worried about Sloan because of Zivu because Zivu is also communicating with him and talking about how he used to kill the the Elixni and he's it's yeah. like it's basically what it sounds like is Zivu is communicating with people and trying to get them into like the war mindset and I yep, think that you feed them. and I think I think it's kind of like a dual purpose that she is trying to use their war their past wars to take them she's taking in her own way and so um because she's talking mm. to more than just him and in week four as well in a deep dive uh drifter asks sloan about being partially taken and how he tried to influence taken cells into himself but it failed because you can't be the one attempting to take you know, something along those lines. Yeah. And, uh, oh, okay. I don't know how to get that image on the screen. Can you send me that image that you sent in discord and Twitter? And then I can, I can, uh, add it. Oh, I was just, yeah. No oh, worries. if you don't care, then you don't care. Um, just yeah. cause I, this is discord for me right here. I, I can't, you know, yeah, yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. add of it. Um, so it sounds like what, what Drifter is talking about is that he's hearing these things and he's relating it in a sense to being taken. And, and so Drifter, uh, Sloan, even Saint is hearing these things. Everyone who's committed like acts of war is apparently hearing Zivu in their head. And this is, this is great. Like where this story is going to go. This is amazing. Uh, so the way that Sloan is dealing with it is that Asa is actually blocking out most of it, most of Zivu's uh, attention. And Drifter claims no one is, uh, and Sloan asks Drifter how he's dealing with it. And he says, no one is better at making him feel, making him uh, hate himself more than himself. And yeah. uh, he also mentions having a beam of moonlight keeping him going. 
Eris. Right? Because he calls Eris Moon Dust. Yep, Moon Dust. Yeah. And that, and that so, I honed in on that too. In fact, I I I, um, I screenshotted that and recorded it on my Xbox when that happened. Uh, I remember that. I was like, "Oh crap! Wait, I got to remember that." And then yeah. I forgot until you just <laughs> broke it up. That's that's, that's <laughs> why I'm gonna that's why I'm gonna start taking notes for now on. Yeah. Um, and so then this week's radio message. Sorry to bounce around between week four and week five. Though. Yeah, no worries. This week's radio message, it's Drifter talking with Zavala. And Zavala's like, why do you trust the Nine so much? And Drifter's like, I don't trust the Nine. I trust Orin. And yeah. he's like, Orin? Who's Orin? And for those who don't know, Orin is the emissary of the Nine, who we haven't seen in forever. Um, right. Um, and she was once yeah. a Titan. She was once a Guardian. She was once a Titan. And she, she knew Drifter in his past. Sorry? She was once a Queen's Guard. Oh yeah, she was an awoken. Yep. She was an awoken who left the distributary with Mara, became yep. a Queen's yep. guard, went to yep. to pitch Mara's ideals to humanity, died, yep. came back as a Titan. Now is a yep. fucking god. She had such a crazy story. Yeah, um, and she's wearing the Queen's guard armor when um, Homeboy Drifter is talking to her. No way. When? Yeah, at the very when we first see Orin as a titan when have we seen Orin as a titan there's a cut scene where he's having a discussion with her um it's it's not like a it's not like a walking across it's one of those weird ones where like they're stills and then they vanish and then it comes back it's another oh. them standing in a different position it was a good one and they're like in that they're like in that nine starry space and it's like water on the ground and he's talking to it was after I, what was it i think it was during the nine crap that we had mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, yeah. I remember it now. I remember it now. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a good catch. I did. I did not catch that. Um, yeah. In any case, drifter says that Orin is still in there in within the emissary. Uh, they, the nine haven't been able to uh, contain her entirely. And Orin has never steered him wrong, has, has never given up fully on, on Jermaine, on the Drifter, on Wu Ming, many of the names that she knew him as. And uh, yeah. Zavala is very surprised that Drifter is a man of such faith. And Drifter comments how he's surprised that Zavala has lost his faith. Um, and yeah. so, yeah. So Drifter, or Zavala is like, are you being genuine? And Drifter says how he's always genuine. People just don't pay attention, which is a really interesting thing for Drifter to say. Because that was interesting. It, it makes me want to go back. It makes me want to go back and like read and listen to everything Drifter has ever said. Because it's like, all right. Go, go find some receipts. Yeah. Where it's like, <laughs> I know you've lied, but have you always been genuine? Like even in yeah. your lies, you know, like it's a really, but I guess he has, I guess he has, because if you think about everything that he ever did, it was for a genuine cause. Like when he was mm -hmm. baiting the, um, the thorn bros, what were they called? The, uh, uh the followers of your. Yeah. 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 That whole thing. Uh, you know, that was like a whole bait thing, even though he was lying about specific uh, details or keeping keeping information from people, I guess, is what his his real good gift is. Is like yeah. keeping keeping the story to what you need to know. <laughs> and so that uh, that throws that actually comes into our week four post mission uh, conversation, where so in week four after we run a deep dive after we do all that stuff. Um, so like week four begins, uh, Drifter's like, hey, go get me some uh, pyramid tech from Scorn. You can go find them in, in Sabathun's throne world. So you go, you just kill like 20 Scorn or something. You get enough. And uh, so you, you give it back to him and he's like, well, I'm doing with this. Go do a deep dive. So you do your deep dive yeah. and you come out of the deep dive <laughs> and you have the conversation. Uh, and so it's Drifter and Sloan. Drifter makes Sloan a drink. She takes a sip and she's like, this is awful. And um, yeah. <laughs> and so Drifter starts talking about, uh, he asks her, he goes, have you ever left the soul system? And she's like, no, I haven't. And he starts recounting his events when he left the soul system, how he found a planet that was super cold, filled with creatures that would suppress your light. And yeah. so, sorry, go on. 
Yeah, no, no. Yeah, that's the that's the cool the monolith and then the yeah. the, the the serpent creature and yep. then yeah. So yep. so this is this is a story we've already known. We've known it for about five years now. Uh, it was, I believe, it was uh, shown on the Ancient Apocalypse Gambit set, which you can read on Ishtar Collective, which I think is also in game. At him as a vendor, you can buy the old Gambit sets. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't want to read it on a more, much more convenient website, and you for some reason want to read it in game, there you go. Uh, <laughs> basically, though, uh, what we used to know or our previous understanding of the events was he and as you said the followers of your actually went out there to try to find technology to suppress light to create a true thorn and while they were out there they found the creatures that suppressed the light but it was randomly air quotes randomly all of their light turned off all at once their light turned off and suddenly they were like you did it. You know, they just all pointed their finger yeah, at each other. Yeah, they're blaming each other. Yeah, yeah, you did it. And so what ended up happening was one one by one, they killed each other until only Drifter was left. What he now says, which kind of retcons uh, the events that were... So our previous understanding was that that was when Gaul attempted to take the Traveler, cut off the light, yeah. their light turned off, yeah. they turned on each other. So this sounds like a retcon because what he now says is that the light suppressing creatures were like pretty much hunting them and they, they were getting smarter about it and they were surrounding them. And one by one, they started to die until there was so many left where uh, they started to get super paranoid and they started trying to, to kill each other for some reason. So it, it doesn't, ne- it doesn't hard retcon, but it kind of soft retcons the events where it's like, yeah. well, maybe this is just a, a new perspective. And ultimately, it's still the fact that the Red War happened that they killed each other. Um, right. That's so, the yeah. other thing that's hard when you do uh, narr- like narrative storytelling or character storytelling. Mm-hmm. Perspective character storytelling, because as they become aware of certain events, also their stories change and evolve. Yeah. So like... What Drifter might have thought back then, he probably has something, or like he has new things that he's learned that tell him what he thought wasn't true and it was actually something else. So mm-hmm. it could be, yeah, like what you're saying, a soft retcon through the eyes of uh, the Drifter's evolved perspective of yeah. the events that happened in his past like, or his memories. He- Here's a little more detail that makes it sound like it's going against what we told you, but in reality, this is just more detail. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so yeah. Drifter shares his story. Sloan is all like, how do you deal with that? Does it ever does it ever get easier? Um, and Drifter says that uh it's not something it's the guilt isn't something that you can ever leave behind. It just gets easier to carry it. Uh, we have a communication with Asa. Uh, this is week four, by the way. Uh, in end in week four, uh, what Asa says sounds like they're describing the collapse, the traveler fleeing, and then the witness chasing. So at week four, we still don't understand the origins of the witness, which we will get to. Uh, but it sounds like it's getting closer and closer to week five. I, I really wish I had written down week one, two, three so that I could just like line them all up and be like, see, this oh, is how damn. it, it, it yeah. draws a straight line to how the witness was created. Um, and yeah. Sloan finally talks about how she kind of regrets uh, staying on Titan during after arrivals because she feels like she missed out on everything. The tower, if she goes back to the tower now, it's not going to feel like home. She's so disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Plus she's like taken a fight. How's that going to look? Yeah, that as well. I mean, Drifter seemed to seem to believe that he knew how to fix it. And I guess technically we did fix it for uh, Callie and Shuro Chi by shooting them. So oh, yeah. Maybe we just got to <laughs> shoot her. <laughs> 
Uh, throughout the two weeks, there is a lot of talk from various people about being concerned about Sloan and saying how we just need to stay with her and be there for her, whether she wants it or not. And it's making me kind of suspicious. Next week is the, the season finale. Uh, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, not the finale, finale in the sense of the, the story beats finale. You get right. six weeks of right. story beats, and next week is is week six. And it's making me suspicious of, uh, because of Drifter, Drifter is uh, suspicious of Asa. Uh, yeah, Sloane's link with Asa is improved. Talks about catching up with the events in the tower. Isn't have any more Zivu claiming Sloane. Uh, I know I had a note about Drifter being suspicious of Asa. I can't find it, though. The long girl. <laughs> oh, and also, Sloane's new name is Thunder Guns, which is very fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Thunder Guns. I call her Thunder, Glen Thunder Guns, respectively. <laughs> <laughs> respectively. Uh, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> he, like, he, he, he has a thing for tough girls. <laughs> I mean, he really does. It, it, it started with Oren, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and so we go to Asa. So week five. Uh, week five, Drift, Drifter sends us after Lucent Hive Ghost. We basically just go to a lost sector, crush the ghost, do a deep dive while he does yeah. a deep dive, blah, blah, blah. We do a deep dive. We talk with Asa. Asa, for the first time, speaks in full sentences, which is... I'm making a joke of it, but it is important. It will come back at the end. Uh, speaks in full sentences saying how they need to use Sloane's body as a voice and that they hope that they understand. Q, oh, uh, Q cutscene. So I really wish that we could just play the cutscene, but it's uh, with the new changes with YouTube and uh, some of the things that Bungie said, it doesn't sound like we're going to be able to do that anymore. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to reach out to someone. Sorry. Yeah, we might get shut down on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna reach out to someone and see if we can, if if it would be okay, if I were to record okay. from my game and then post on my own YouTube and then download from my own YouTube and then just hit play on my computer. Mm. Um, if it would be okay because we're watching it to give context to a conversation, I think we'd be in the in the green for that, but uh, it's not for you archival could, purposes. Could, so you'd have to record it on that and then press it on new vinyl and then play it on your record player <laughs> and then show slides i can do it oh yeah well <laughs> like we're on fucking vacation <laughs> to avoid these dmca strikes <laughs> yeah um so i'm gonna run down the events of the cutscene, and specifically yeah. because i i wanted to have notes on it because a number of these notes are going to be used in my argument, which we're about to get to. <laughs> so I have no pad and paper, y'all. So, <laughs> so cat-eyed people found a relic. They called the gardener. It's ushered in a golden age for them, prospered for eons, but the gardener never spoke. It lavished them with gifts, but not guidance. They desired meaning, structure, a winnower to shape the garden. They discovered the gardener shared a connection with another entity among the stars, the Veil. They took their pyramid ships and claimed it, claimed the Veil. The light could bend the laws of the universe and create life, but that means it could create ruin as well. Symbols of natural disaster come on screen, uh, a volcano, a, a horrible uh, swirling storm. Light isn't a source of prosperity, but of chaos. Studying the veil revealed the darkness to them, a power shaped by thought and consciousness. In this power, they found a way to carve away chaos of existence. Carve away the chaos of existence. To calcify it into a final shape, eternal and perfected. They brought the veil to the traveler to strengthen the connection with this they could reshape all reality. The gardener. Uh, the traveler. I, I accidentally wrote traveler there. They brought they brought the veil to the gardener. With that, they could reshape all reality, and the gardener fled. They cut themselves into pieces. This was their last resort, and they merged themselves into the salvation they craved. And this is just a straight quote. <clears throat> Thus began the witness's pursuit, one to impose meaning on a meaningless universe, one that is nearly at its end. 
Yeah. And uh, so really quick, before we get into our debate, uh, the final hollow projector, and that's all I have for my notes. The final hollow projector is with Sloane. And uh, sh- she's saying how she sees a parallel in her story with that of the race that became the witness in that they were they, they were they needed a purpose and they got an obsession. And that's mm-hmm. kind of how she feels. She felt that way when uh, she stayed on Titan. And I'm not sure if she meant during the Red War when she held the line on Titan or during arrivals when she refused to leave Titan and then et cetera happened. And she ends it off by saying how her link with Asa is even stronger now, which is how Asa was able to communicate in full sentences. And uh, next week, we should be able to learn how to get into the portal, which is very exciting because of that. Yeah. That would be great. So, debate time. Would you like, would you like to right. go first? So are so do we need to explain the the cutscene at all before? Or? Okay, so so the reason that this yeah I'll I'll just do a quick. Uh, the reason that this yeah. cutscene is 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 having a debate now is because people believe, myself included, believe that this throws out one of the most like influential lore books from Shadowkeep, yeah. the <laughs> Unveiling, and uh, I can't talk about the Unveiling without saying. Shout out to all the people, myself included, who deleted and recreated the character every, <laughs> however many times it took. Uh, how to many entries are books, in that book? Yeah. I got that book week my two. My God. I deleted There's my Titan lot. eight times and replayed the Shadowkeep campaign eight times to get that book week two. <laughs> That's funny. Now my Titan doesn't have anything. It doesn't, <laughs> it has nothing unlocked. <laughs> um,. <laughs> In in the unveiling lore book, it's it's being spoken to us from an entity known as the Winnower, who claims to have existed with the gardener in a time before existence, in which they played a flower game. The gardener had its moves, the winnower had its moves, the gardener got sick of the fact that the game would always end in the same way, and it flipped the board, it was all mad, and the winnower is like, alright, well I'm gonna kill you now, and it had the first knife. And so it it really follows the rules of the gardener is for chaos, is for life, and the winnower is for order and is for death, the order created from death specifically. And so the it, reason that so throws to, to summarize that for anybody brand new to the lore listening to this real quick, it would be like if you're playing tic tac toe with yourself. Yeah. And you can't win because you keep coming up to cat, right? That's what they call it when you mm-hmm. can't win tic-tac-toe, a very simple game. So the flower game is like tic-tac-toe, just a little bit more elaborate. And you're playing yourself, so you obviously can't reach across the table and kill yourself because you'll die. Mm-hmm. So like, the whole idea is that light and dark are sitting across one another playing tic-tac-toe, and then one of them's like, man, this is not going to work here's a knife. And so that starts this whole saga. Yeah. And so, and so actually, thank you for saying that because it did, it did remind me to also say this. So, so this is, this is before existence and the gardener said there needs to be a new rule and the gardener was going to place itself in the game and create its new rule, which we interpreted to be the light. And the winner were said, yeah. then I'm going to follow you into the game and I'm going to create my own new rule, which we interpreted to be the dark. Then comes right. Lightfall and we learn about the veil, which is an artifact of light, but grants the darkness. And it's like, well, how does that work? How does, how, how is that possible? And the answer is this cutscene. The witness is not the winnower, as many people have assumed. The witness was a race of people who found the gardener. And so in that sense, there is no winnower. That's my defense. There is no winnower. There is only the witness who has become the winnower that they've decided they've, de- they've desired as said in that cutscene. Um, 
And so that whole unveiling lore book that tells you of this like this like romantic story of existence before existence and and the worms and the roots and and things that like sound like the vex all of that was bullshit spoken <laughs> by the witness trying to convince guardians to join its side to say let me take you back to where it all began and look what an asshole the gardener is yeah yeah so that's that was the argument we had was and it wasn't like you're wrong, I'm right kind of argument. It was yeah. just like, here's, here's my side, here's your side. Yeah, here was the perspective that I picked up on. And so I guess the difference was, and this is what's happening in the community too. Is, okay, um, well, so, so let, people... let's, let's, let's actually, uh, sorry to interrupt, but let's actually hear your take on that cutscene, And then I'll give you my so, take. Yeah, so the, the, so the cutscene was really... Uh, impactful as we all know because it showed the origin story of the witness we know the witness is created out of a race of people that were gifted the light by the traveler when the traveler entered <laughs> i guess the flower game so mm -hmm. when the traveler showed up it blessed these people but never spoke to him sounds familiar right yeah and uh, it's 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 obviously happened in the lore uh several times the fallen and now us and um uh, so there are people that have, there are entities that have been gifted the light. So the the thing that diverged for me was I don't feel like unveiling was a lie. I feel like it was the darkness talking, and then the witness out of this passion that these people had for understanding and knowledge, which the hive call ayat, mm -hmm. and that word which I associate with the original lore in D1 as being the killing word mm -hmm. that we all wondered about. What is the killing word? The killing word is Ayat. And Ayat is this thirst for knowledge that overcomes you so much that it becomes your obsession and your eternal drive, and you will never attain it. But it propels you forward indefinitely until your existence is snuffed out by whatever. So that's my viewpoint on Ayat in and uh the killing word and so how it relates to this particular thing is these people were blessed by the traveler but they sought knowledge and that was their undoing is because they needed a purpose they needed to know why the hell they were there and so they went out and they found a dark mirror to the to the traveler which was of the light as well the veil and they tried to bring it back to the veil and when they brought it back to the veil, the traveler said, see you later, no thanks. And so when the traveler said, see you later, no thanks, this race of people said, nah, this veil gave us these really cool powers of understanding and knowledge, and we're going to use it to combine ourselves and chase you, the cr chase you across the universe and make you submit in one way or another. And so thus begins this long, drawn-out war. But what I think is the witness was never the 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 winner as mm -hmm. as anon stated the witness mantled that responsibility and the witness became the or is trying to become the winner god by damn, proxy man. the darkness's influence oh, i wish i went first you're kind of you're kind of compelling me <laughs> that is that is so, that is a good argument god damn so Sorry, no, that's but good. that that for me, and the only reason I have that is because I don't I don't have the big picture that I can get mudded up in. I have these mm -hmm. like items that I get obsessed with, and this like knowledge, and so everything that I read is kind of on the fringes. But it gives me a really good uh, like what's the word cliff notes perspective on the lore and destiny. And yeah. so I don't get bogged down with the beautiful stories and poems and stuff. I love them and I appreciate them. But when I read them, I don't, I guess, I guess my problem is, is I don't see them in the way that other people do. And so I enjoy them and I love them and I wish I could see them in the way that other people do. But, uh, because of all of these little extraneous stories that go on the, on the fringes, I, 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 think and i feel like i have a good comprehension as to what they're trying to do or what the intent is of the writer yeah. i don't proclaim 
know everything about it. I just it gives me a little bit of a little clearer picture on certain things, but it definitely helps a lot when you guys go out and read these extremely detailed things and pick up these little things that I never would have noticed had it not been for y'all. And so I just kind of like gum it together. But that's my interpretation. I I'm kind of spiraling out on your interpretation and how much sense it makes. <laughs> Because, like, now I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, because that actually makes sense. Because the winnower, assuming, assuming that the, the, the unveiling winnower, the, the winnower would not actually want to enter the game. They would not do that themselves. They would just want their philosophy to enter the game. Ooh, and so, so, like so they create the veil to offer their philosophy in the game, which is a non-sentient playing piece. It's just, it's a tool to be used. Yeah. And, and like, so it even makes sense with their fucking naming. Str- this is why I said, I wish I went first because now I don't even want to argue my point. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to well, yeah, go off you, on this. You, you just made, you just made a really good connection there because, okay. Oh so the gardener is in the game. So the gardener traveled to the game, which is yeah. where we are. And then the veil is the veil that the darkness is using to communicate into yeah. the game. Yeah. And it's like, because it, it, it here's, makes, the other stuff that, it, here's the other fucked up thing about it. Look at the veil. It only looks like half a ball. The what the up. hell? Whatever the hell you're about to say, don't even fucking say it. You're saying something stupid, and I'm trying to be serious right now. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, I just threw that last bit out as a joke. But no, you're right. But, but, so but, but, but let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. The, yeah. the gardener entered the game. The gardener yep. has to enter the game, whereas because the gardener needs to physically like plant the seeds, right? Like you can't just like yes. scatter a bunch of seeds. You need to plant nope. them yourself. Whereas the winner, Johnny Appleseed, the winner has the opportunity to say, "I won't enter the game, but I will give them my tool. I will give them my sickle to to winnow yeah. the weeds." And oh, so the fuck, witness man. has mantled that responsibility. Fuck, man. God damn it. I love that. Okay. Well, so here's the other so, argument. And it's going to be okay, very, go it's going to be very phoned in because I'm no longer on this side. Um, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> basically, um, the other argument <laughs> is this, uh, the cat eyed people find the gardener and then they find the, and they're given the gifts, they're given the everything, they're given the light, and they're given immortality, they're given without without restriction. And the and the gardener, the traveler, learned from that to only give enough, not to give enough yeah. where they get everything. Because if they get everything, they're gonna turn on you, type of uh, yeah. thing. This is this is how I was taking it. And so because they had everything, they 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 desired meaning. They had no meaning in their life because they had nothing to achieve. When they were cat-eyed people, they lived a uh, when they were just the cat-eyed people. They 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 lived a, a hard life, and they were filled with hope. Their meaning was the hope of existing beyond what they had right then. But when they had everything, they had nothing to hope for. So they had yeah. to find. They had to find something else, and that's when they 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 craved a winnower to shape the garden. They wanted more than they were given. They were they were not happy. Um, yeah. So they find they find the veil, and they want it to create life. They want it to end the chaos of existence that was perpetuated by the gardener, and to create a final shape because. Now that they've they've existed in this like upper upper living sphere of like everything you've been given, they realize how bad that is, and they 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 want to create the universe in their image, and so they become they try to use the veil to to do so, and the gardener flees. And so they become the witness by cutting themselves up and, and performing this dark ritual, which binds them all together. And they become this, this thing 
that chases after the, the, the traveler as we now know it. And so, so when in season of arrivals, we, we have the witnesses pyramid ships come and communicate with us, telling us this, this, this grand story about how, how they come from this time before and all that, where they're the winnower and the gardener and the flower game and the first knife. And, uh, what was it? Uh, a uh, proton 53. Yeah. Proton 53. Yeah, That's pro- the one everybody honed in on. Yeah, Proton Fifty Theory, where it's like your your entire existence is because of me. Where like, yeah. like humanity started as goop that that, and then one day I taught the goop to eat another goop to get the nutrients from the second goop, and so on <laughs> triggered evolution and all these things. And it's like yeah. when you're reading it the first time, and you're you're in this mind of like absolute honesty and not bias of uh perspective perspective bias and like is this person mm-hmm. lying to me when you're when you're reading it and you're just like this is true this is fact this is this is canon you're like holy shit this is kind of compelling maybe maybe we are on the wrong side and now with with the knowledge of who the witness is with the idea that the witness is the winnower because the witness was saying hey i'm the winnower and here's the story of how it all started y- you look back at it now and you're like, that motherfucker lied to me. You know, it's, <laughs> they told you this yeah. compelling lie because if they came and they were like, Hey, we don't like how things are alive and uh, we want to kill everything because life is chaos. We, we had eons with the traveler. We, we had a great life. We got sick of it. <laughs> like if, if that's what they said to you, you'd be like, fuck off. You would never join them. You know, like, so they lied to us in, in the claim that they are the winnower, that the flower game was a thing and that the gardener flipped the board and look what a fucking jerk the gardener is, right? Like they were, they were so upset that, that they were losing the game and it's like, they weren't even losing, you know, it just, it kind of ended in a draw every time and they were sick that they didn't get the win and it, it really paints the traveler in a bad light and the winnower in this like mature light. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> that's the other argument. And I think there is still merit in that argument, but I I like yours more. I, I like the idea that the, the witness is mantling the winnower more. Yeah. Like the yeah. first knife was that... a the first knife was a real thing, and the first knife was the veil. Yeah. And it's like, all right, here's here's the first knife, and the, the witness found it. Yeah, and that was the that was the tool to their demise. Which yeah, so so it's like so this is the thing that that creates that hunger is that um, thirst for knowledge. And so like these people were living this peaceful existence, God, and then they had to have God. it. They My had God. they had to have the freaking you know knowledge and like order and structure and reasoning. And when they went searching for that, just like a famous quote. If you if you look for the answer you've been looking for long enough, eventually someone's going to tell it to you, right? Yep. So, like, it doesn't matter. You could think, okay, I want to I want to know if unicorns exist, so I'm going to go find I'm going to go find proof. Eventually, you will if you look long enough, mm-hmm. <laughs> because some way or another, you're going to be convinced of your own demise. Um, it's the fate of all fools that we learned about in D1, you know, the game, the, the gun, you know, the, the fate of all fools being that your own, your own foolishness is this, 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 uh, this hunger, this, this thirst, this perpetual need for more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes not everything has to have a meaning. (laughs) That's really hard for me because I just want to know everything as much as I can. Uh, God, but you, you, not you would turn on the traveler so fast. I would. Um, unfortunately, I, and here's the other funny thing is, uh, I say it all the time, but Ulan Tan was woke as fuck. <laughs> 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 and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that like he I mean, he knew some shit. I, yeah, so. I don't think we need to get too hard into it, but I, I don't... W- 
genuinely being woke is not a negative because that's just no being understanding. Yeah. Obviously, right. it's used as a negative all the time. Yeah, yeah. There, one of my one of my um one of my favorite series. There was uh uh the god that one of the gods is talking about how like humans rose against all the magical species and shit, and he's like some woke ass humans came and canceled us, but in the old fashioned <laughs> way, you know, with pitchforks and fire. <laughs> And it was oh, like, that's but that's that not being woke, you fucking idiot. And he's like, he's like <laughs> the the biggest fucking capitalist you could ever have. And that's awesome. And I, I love uh, him because he's such a nuanced character in that, like, yeah. he does not understand at all, but he keeps saying it like he does. <laughs> that's funny. Um uh, so uh This was a this was a good episode. I agree. Oh man, that is grainy as fuck. Um, oh, that's sorry horrible. for the, Don't even the share horrible that. quality of this. Throw that image. Away. This is Don't this is <laughs> this is what I know was saying <laughs> as uh, this could be the Tolan disciple, which I would love to see. I would love to see Tolan yeah. look like this badass motherfucker. You know why that picture looks so bad? Because I screen. shared it in the DM of Twitter and it compressed it so bad. Yeah, it was compressed as a, a JPEG underscore small, and I had to remove the small to get it on OBS. <laughs> so, oh my god, it's horrible. Yeah, that that was atrocious. Um, that was really bad. That's going to be it for us this week, and next week, we're going to be talking about something else. Um, not next week. <laughs> Ju- July 9th, we're going to be talking about something else. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. This one's so fun, though. <laughs> um, we have... I got it. I've been I've been falling behind on um, my spoiler squad duty, so I don't even know what's on Ishtar. Uh, we might actually get to talk about In Spiral, the Lightfall raid lore book. That would be pretty fun, considering all the oh, that would be. darkness reveal. And obviously, we'll talk about the seasonal story beat finale because if we're going into the portal, that's fucking awesome. Mm. So that'll be on July 9th. Same time, same place. Come hang out with us. If you join late, you can find all of our information. If you can see my fucking finger, you can find all of our information on Twitter at Loose Cannon Show as it is spelled down there. Uh, our pinned tweet has everything you need to know. And we're going to try again to post the video format so that if you watch it on Spotify, you can watch it on Spotify. You don't have to listen to it on Spotify. You can actually watch it. Um, Cause I thought nice. that was interesting. We had that work uh, two weeks ago and last week, even though our host anchor is literally Spotify, it wouldn't accept, it wouldn't accept the video and it, it pushed the, the audio format everywhere else. It was just Spotify rejected the video. I, I don't know why. Um, In any case, we'll see you then. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Bye.